heavy metals are lurking all around us. We're eating and drinking them, we're breathing them in, and we're even smearing them on our skin. They're everywhere. And the level of exposure continues to rise as they're widely used in agriculture and industry. And once they're in the environment, unlike organic waste, they stick around. They cannot be broken down. They're considered to be non-biodegradable. They're just moved around. And as they move from one trophic level to the next, the levels encountered increase. The term used to describe this phenomenon is bioaccumulation. Since we're at the top of the food chain, we're especially vulnerable. But it's not a crisis. Fortunately, your body has the capacity to process them in such a way as to pass them out. That is, they're actively excreted. But when the level of exposure is high, they can and do go into long-term storage. The operative word is long-term. Cadmium can stick around in your body for 30 years. The trouble is that as they accumulate, They negatively impact cell processes. Some organs are more vulnerable than others. Liver cells are more resilient because facing toxic things is part of their job description. But the kidney and pancreas cells are especially vulnerable. Heavy metal toxicity has been implicated in beta cell death and the emergence of type 2 diabetes. Given the potential dangers of heavy metal exposure, It's important to take steps to minimize your risk. First prize is to avoid exposure. The practicalities of this are fraught with difficulties. As I said, they're everywhere and exposure levels continue to rise. But there are biological levers that you can exploit to both decrease how much you absorb and increase how much you pee out. Join us for this episode of Better Body Chemistry TV as we learn how to kick heavy metals to the curb naturally using a dietary strategy. Better Body Chemistry TV is brought to you by Dr. Sandy, a scientist turned gremlin buster, helping you battle sugar gremlins, heifer lumps, and other health horribles through better body chemistry. Remember, small things can make a big difference to your health. Now, biologically speaking, the heavy metals have no known function. And this means that the body has no infrastructure to move them about. So to be moved, they have to hijack systems that are in place to move the metals we need. Now, one of the metals we need is iron. But the biology of iron is complex. And there's still a lot of things that science doesn't know. But what is clear is too little and too much have seriously negative consequences. So to keep iron levels just right, the absorbing of iron is tightly regulated by a hormone called hepcidin. The focus on regulating absorption is because officially we don't have a way to get rid of iron. Yes. It can be lost if there is significant levels of bleeding. This is why women during their reproductive years are especially vulnerable to iron deficiencies. The major iron transporter is a protein called DMT1, divalent metal transporter 1. This transporter is found in the enterocytes. These are the cells that line the gut and are responsible for absorbing nutrients that we eat. And it's also found in the cells that line the tubules of the kidney. Now, in both cases, it's importing iron. In the gut, importing is squirreling away the iron that came with dinner, Mm, hopefully. If you're following a plant-based diet, the amount of iron up for grabs can be too little to meet the body's needs. In the kidney, it's frantically collecting the iron that spilled out as the kidney cleaned up. The kidney has an odd way of doing things. It pours everything out, the good, the bad, and the indifferent, and then it sifts through the waste 
picking and choosing what to keep. Only selected items are reabsorbed. Iron is one of those things it chooses to keep. In fact, DMT1 is not the only protein reabsorbing iron in the kidney. Zip proteins, specifically Zip8 and Zip14, do this. So does the transferrin 1 receptor, as well as the megalin cubulin complex. In the healthy, not a molecule of iron is allowed to slip through. So, what does this have to do with heavy metals? Well, for the most part, heavy metals are about the same size and shape as iron enough to create transporter confusion. The iron transporters end up transporting heavy metals. And in the gut, this means they bring in the heavy metals that came with dinner. And in the kidney, they end up reabsorbing any that happen to have made it into the circulation. You want to keep the iron, but you want to pass on those heavy metals. And now for the good news. You will, if iron levels are adequate. You see, the number of those transporters at any given point in time is dependent on the body's iron resources. When iron levels are low, DMT1 comes out in full force because that iron is needed. However, when iron levels are replete, the number of DMT transporters is kept to a minimum because the signal to make them isn't being sent since, well, the iron isn't needed. A skeleton staff of iron transporters will get the job of iron absorption sorted. With fewer transporters on duty, the opportunity for heavy metals to hitch a ride is diminished. Fewer heavy metals get absorbed in the first place, so more are pooped out. And less kidney transporters means more heavy metals are peed out. Just what you're looking for. The phenomenon of higher heavy metal levels in people with iron deficiency has been observed multiple times across the years. So the take-home message, to protect yourself from heavy metal toxicity, do what you must to make sure your iron levels are not compromised. Of course, this can sometimes be easier said than done. Iron's biology is complicated. Want to learn more? Visit the library page on the Better Body Chemistry blog to access resources related to iron and heavy metals. And if you need a little help figuring things out, consider booking a one-on-one -on -one health conversation with me. I can look at your situation and answer questions you have. Begin the journey today to Better Body Chemistry and better health. The advice is simple to follow and based on real science, not hype. Here is one of the journal articles I've used to tell today's story. Click through the blog to find them all. Know someone worried about heavy metal toxicity? Share this video with them so they can add this to their detox strategies. And if this is your first time here, be sure to subscribe to our channel to catch future episodes of Better Body Chemistry TV. Thank you so much for watching, and I'll see you next time. Remember, small things can make a big difference to your health.